Mazi Hidari says, Mark Goon, vague question. When are you betting big versus betting small? I mean, it depends. But mostly I am betting big when I have a nut advantage. And what that means is I can have all the nut hands and my opponent cannot. With the three bet with Jax. We see Maria with the back door. Oh, yeah, that's kind of annoying. Heart draw here with the ace of hearts. I'm driving you a little extra insane over there. Yeah. <laughs> well, not how it happened. Someone just got real mad one day. I mean, it looks like someone punched it. 22. And Maria's just going to come out and lead here for 2200 We have seen her play more conservatively today. And Garrett is just going to call with Jax. Fuck yeah, I'm scared. Fucking terrified. The heart comes on the turn, and now let's see if Maria continues firing with the ace of hearts. And she goes all in. <laughs> she goes all in. A good bluff for Maria when she so has the ace like of hearts here. And Garrett's just got to be thinking now, does she lead with a flush draw on this flop? And if she doesn't, what are her bluffs? Let's listen to Garrett try to figure this one out. Garrett talking and trying to get a read here. Garrett's just in a really rough spot. When she leads here, she's repping over pairs and flush draws. 
The flushes get there. Nine hours. I'm tired. So tired. I slept. I slept eight. Yeah. I'm tired in the I've gone. I've gone on like a waking up at like seven a.m. schedule, and I've felt way better throughout the day. For sure. Yeah. Like sleeping at the yeah. night schedule. I just feel that, like good That's how I am time. too. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I'm like, I do a night shift, I'd sleep like 12 hours and just still wake up exhausted. Yeah, yeah. Because our body's If I was Maria here, I'd be dying with Garrett in the tank, making a huge bluff, and Garrett just trying to get a read. And Garrett folds, Maria gets it through, and she shows. <laughs> Good bluff from Maria. Good to continue firing on Maria, we got a game, Maria, we got a game now. Oh, man. We got a fucking game. I was wondering if she door. was going to follow up. And she does. So, Art opens this one up. Andy just calls with the suited Broadway from the small blind. And now he leads when he flops the nuts. So we're seeing an unconventional play from Andy. And Art's going to raise here. Art has a good hand to raise. He blocks two pair, he blocks a set of tens, and he blocks the nut straight. And he checks this turn over to Art after raising the flop. And let's see if Art continues here. He has one of the best bluffing combos he can have here. And he's going to go pot, which I like the sizing. is going to call and let him hang himself. You don't want to be around other Four fucking hours. poker players. Yeah, makes sense. The board um, pairs yeah. on the river. Good card for Andy again. Or good card for Art. I'm sorry, good card for Art because Art can have the aces, the kings, the tens. He does block tens and he does block the straight. And I think we're going to see Art fire here. Overbet, 1.5x from Art. I like it. We can see Andy has the straight here. But if Art's going to have any bluffs here, this is the hand to do it with. Art can't like that. <laughs> I don't think Andy can raise here. Actually, I really think raising is almost out of the question. And he does just call, and he's going to be good. 
So Andy's unconventional play gets him paid there. He leads. Leads on the flop into the pre-flop razor. And Art with one of his best combos to uh, kind of turn into a bluff there. Blocking the sets, the two pairs, and the straights. Goes for the overbet bluff. Barry Kelly says, well, we got a real hand here, so hold on, Barry Kelly. Garrett opening under the gun with King Queen and now Art. He could look like maybe he's steaming a little bit. Wakes up with kings. And Garrett puts in the four bet. Thinking Art can be light here after losing a couple big pots. And Art is just going to call. I like it. I think Kings as a five bet is almost too light. You want to be more polar. If you do have a five bet range, it's pretty much aces or nothing. So you want to work in maybe some ace king or ace five suited as your five bet bluffs. I just don't have a five bet range against good players. Garrett's going to continue with two overs in the gut shot. Art calls. Hard on the turn. Art does have the king of hearts. Garrett does not have a heart in his hand. And Garrett does check. Let's see what Art elects to do here with kings with the king of hearts. Garrett's four bet range here for value is probably queens plus, maybe sometimes jacks. Handsome ace king. Ten on the river, that's a pretty big blank. It does bring a one liner to an eight, but neither player is really going to ever have an eight here. But for Garrett, it does make him the straight. Runs good in these spots, doesn't he? And Garrett moves in. Man, it's going to be about a pot size bet behind for Art. Pot at about 12,000, and Garrett just moves in. And Art's got to hate his life here. He does block king-queen. He can't figure that Garrett has all too much king-queen. Garrett has a very hidden straight here. He loses to aces. He does beat queens, but not sure if Garrett goes this thin with queens here. Probably not. This is probably aces plus. 
Maybe even aces is too thin here. As Art can have the jacks and the tens. Garrett's pretty much saying I've got a set plus. It's hard for Garrett to have a set here, though. That's the under the gun opener. And Art just trying to figure out would Garrett four bet jacks here? Would he four bet tens? Probably not. So what does he have? So disrespectful if I fold this fucking hand. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Mmm. So fucked up. Uh. Art knows optimally he's supposed to call here. But he's leaning fold, it sounds like. Art lays it down with the amazing fold. Has the kings there. He blocks the straight. He blocks the flush. And Art just sniffs it out. Shout out to you guys in the Twitch and YouTube chats who have stuck with us. All night for the uh, high stakes 50 50 100. 100 game on Friday. Always fun to uh, see these guys play. Andy raises it up to 300 under the gun, and we're going to see Chris 3 bet, both with suited broadways here. Shout out to Sandy Joy, as always, in the Twitch chat. So we saw Chris 3-bet this. Andy does flop the flush draw. Chris is going to C-bet. Interesting to see what action Andy takes here on this board. It's kind of inconsequential. So Chris is going to retain both the range advantage and the nut advantage. He's going to have more good hands, and he's going to have the nuts in his range here, which the nuts on this board is essentially aces. That does change a little on the turn. Now tens is the nuts. I didn't play good today either. I played pretty, pretty good, good turn there. card for Andy here. Now with top pair to go along with his flush draw. Chris just uh, with no equity here. But he is going to continue firing. Takes a large sizing, slight over bet, just a little bit over pot.
And Chris kind of finding an unconventional bluff here. Let's see what he does on this river. Could put Andy actually in a pretty tough spot. Andy does have a pair of 10s, but Chris would most likely take a large sizing here with Jack's plus on this river. And it's gonna put 10s in a really tough spot if Chris does go for it. Twelve thousand, and uh, Chris with the air ball, triple barrel bluff in a three bet pot, and Andy can't love it. Chris would most likely take this sizing with Jack's plus here, and with Andy having the two hearts in his hand, it does reduce the combinations of bluffs Chris can have. Andy just in a very uncomfortable spot here. And Andy's going to turn his hand into a bluff. <coughs> and Chris just snap folds. Andy saying here, I can beat aces. I've got tens full. I've got ace three. Etc. Trying to get an overpair to fold, fold there. I'm not sure if it would have worked, but uh, fortunately for Andy, Chris just has nothing.